Hi guys, welcome back to the Volume Bookshelf. And today I'm going to do two videos or two reviews in one video for Emily Duncan's Wicked Saints and Ruthless Gods. Um, I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. What with Ruthless Gods only being out for about a little, just barely over a month. Um, so I want to try. If I do say anything that's kind of spoilery, I do apologize. Um, just know that it is hard. <laughs> um, and then. I am going to try and keep this under 30 minutes, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, wish me luck. Um, so but anyways, um, I'm going to do Wicked Saints first. So Wicked Saints, I listened to back in December, uh, last couple days of December, and listened to it like almost non-stop. I started it one night and listened to it most of the next day while at work. Um, I didn't have any clients. I sat in the back room and just listened to the book until I went home and uh, then yeah, finished it up. Uh, I loved it. Okay, so Wicked Saints uh, follows, or it's about two warring countries, uh, Trinavia and um, Kaliazi. The Trinavians are blood mages. Um, Kaliazi look at blood mages as being, or blood magic, in general being um, a heresy and they are absolutely 100% against it um, they think that really gods are like the only ones the only beings that should have magic um, and in Trinavia there is a very very powerful blood mage Seraphim and in Kaliazi there is the one cleric that has been God touched by all the gods, so and, she, and with the cleric, she can um, she can commune with the gods, and the gods talk to her, um, and not just one god, but all the gods. Her, but her main god is a god is a goddess um, Mar, uh, Marzinia, and she's the goddess of winter and death and magic, um, and, and uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, and that's Nadia. Nadia is the cleric, and she. Uh, if she needs any powers or anything like that, she will commune with the gods, and some and some will grudgingly give her magic. The other ones are, are a little more likely to. Um, but um, those two countries are at war because of differing beliefs. Seraphin is on the hunt to find Nadia because Nadia's blood could potentially boost his power. Um, and <clears throat> throughout all this, there is another faction within um, Trinavia called uh, the Vultures. It's a, like an occult group um, and the head of that is uh, Malachiaj. He's the Black Vulture. Um, and it just kind of ensues on how they they kind of kind of some of them come together, and the plot is to take down the king um, in some fashion that kind of goes awry. But anyways, so that little brief summary, and no, I didn't do the, do the summary justice, but there's kind of a lot that you can't talk about without giving things away. But anyways, so I loved it. The book is a slow burn. Um, and to me, it moved very much like a like a uh, D and D campaign. So there's a lot of planning and plotting and traveling that are that is being done. Um, and it just it felt comfortable for me. But like I said, it is a slow burn, so there's not like a whole bunch of action. Um, it's all very it's very dialogue heavy. Um, the magic systems for Blood Mage and for her for Seraphin and for Nadia the cleric. Um, I uh, didn't have an issue with. Um, I understood what a cleric was playing D and D. Um, I knew how she got her powers and stuff like that. Um, and then with Seraphin and Malachiage, I it, Blood Mage is kind of a given. I knew what it was. Um, with that being said, with it being uh, blood magic, there is a lot of cutting. So if that is a trigger, just be warned. There's a lot of cutting, a lot of uh, uh, blood. But I mean, I didn't have a problem with it. Um, so, yeah, the magic systems I, I really didn't have an issue with. I actually liked them. Was, I was intrigued by the blood magic, um, but 
Yeah, and just in general, it moved like a D&D campaign. So you're talking about, a, a, there's a lot of talking, a lot of planning, a lot of traveling. And just so if this is kind of like an issue where it kind of get, it can get a little heavy, um, just bear with it because it is a really good book. So getting, I'm just going to get this out here right now. The one bad thing and the reason why I would not give this book a five star rating is the words. Um, the pronunciation of them was so, was, it's such a beating that I, like I said, I had to stop reading Ruthless Gods and go and get, or have my husband gift me with the audiobooks from Audible just to be able to listen to it because I could not, for the life of me, pronounce these words. They are Russian-Polish, um, and a lot of the, the lore and, um, and the the settings for that is very much like gothic gothic russia poland um so if you have trouble pronunciating words especially different languages and some of the sayings are even like the characters will do are in the and this russian poland uh combination is just it's frustrating it is frustrating because you want to understand what they're saying and you can't um, and even like Malakiyash's name, it looks and, sp is, looks and spelled kind of like um, uh, Ma um, Malakiyash's, so, but it, it's pronounced Malakiyash. It's just, it's, it's weird, it's hard. That is probably my only bad remark is the pronunciation. It, I wish, I wish I just had the patience for it, but I don't. Um, there was a small part in the book, uh, in Wicked Saints that I didn't quite care for, and it was, um, the Revolic, which is like a competition for Seraphim's hand in marriage. I didn't really see a point in that other than furthering the plot. Um, I didn't enjoy that part of the book. I didn't see a point of it. It was very redundant for me. I just, I just didn't like it. It just didn't flow with the, with the story. But... Overall, I love the dark feel. It is dark and gritty and gothic. Um, when the story starts, I mean, it jumps right into chaos. Maybe in a page or two, it's already, um, you're already running, watching Nadia run for her life. Um, so I really, really enjoyed it. And, now, and I've mentioned the three characters, uh, Nadia, Seraphim, and Malakiyash. Um they are, they, it follows them, not, it switches between Nadia and Seraphim's, um, point of view a lot. But yeah, I love those characters. They were fun. Um, I didn't quite care for Seraphim all that much, to be honest, and I didn't really care for Nadia all that much. Um, Nadia was just too much of a goody-goody. Um, with her being the cleric, she kind of has to be. Um, she is a very devout believer in her gods. Seraphim is, you know, just the... Pretty Boy Prince, um, and uh, Malachiaj is definitely the dark and broody, um, morally gray, heavy morally gray character that I adored. Um, and, and he was my absolute favorite character. He's the reason why I fell in love with the, with the story so much was Malachiaj. Um, I liked the idea of him. He goes through like a, um, when he outs himself as being a vulture and, and on top of that the black vulture um it's the the scenes are so awesome um the 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 way he transforms or the 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 blood um coming out uh tearing out of his eyes and his nose and his mouth was really intriguing and i liked it the the iron claws that he has is just i liked it it was so so cool um and definitely, definitely morally gray. And that's like also the one thing that I really do like about him. He does not change who he is just because he might be having feelings. <laughs> so, and he will ultimately do what he has to do in order to achieve his own goals. So, D&D wise, I'd probably say that's lawful evil. So... Yeah, I really like him, and it wasn't until him is when, is when I realized that I do have a really big soft spot for morally gray guys, or villainous guys. So, I loved him. He was so perfect. He was so cool. Um, 
But yeah, so no spoilers for Wicked Saints. Uh, the, the ending did happen really fast. Um, I saw it coming, but at the same time I didn't quite see it coming. Um, it was just, it, it kind of sort of took me by surprise, but once the ending happened, it's like there was no other way it could have happened that I could see. But I liked it. Overall, it was really good. The writing, <sighs> okay, so part of me, it's kind of left me wanting a little bit more uh, detail or descriptions and stuff like that. So I feel like the, the writing is a bit um, minimalistic with details. Um, it's almost reads like I said, like a D and D campaign, you gotta have an imagination to be able to to really understand what's going on. At least from my opinion. Um, but yeah, I loved them. I would totally listen to Wicked Saints again. I mean, I, I mean, I was gifted it on Audible. I have to. So I uh, will definitely listen to it again. Reading, I wish I could, but I can't because of the words. So that is again my only downfall. Downfall for it is is that. Um, so with Wicked Saints kind of out of the way, I'll go to Ruthless Gods. I might kind of jump back and forth to Wicked Saints if I feel the need to. So now on to Ruthless Gods. Okay, so holy crap. Okay, so Ruthless Gods picks up four months after the events of Wicked Saints. Um, and this one was a bit darker than the first one a bit more um, heavy in the horror elements um, and oh, man. it was a bit more gritty definitely more bloody uh, again these books are not for people who have you know blood triggers or um, uh, cutting triggers so definitely in blood especially the last part of Wicked Saints or not Wicked Saints Where those Gods um, so that in mind um, so like I said, it, fall, it picks up four months after the events of Wicked Saints, um, and, you know, Malakiaj has up and disappeared. Um, Nadia is still kind of hiding out in Trinavia, um, with not a peep from her gods, um, which is very, um, concerning to her. Seraphin is trying to fill in the role of king, um, and is having issues with his court due to that, and then one thing after another, or one thing leads to another, and they have to flee Trinavia. Um, where, and then Nadia has this grand plan of she needs to go to the seat of the gods, which is in the mountain. Um, to try and stop this holy war from continuing on that's ravaging both Trinavia and Kaliazi. Um, so with that in mind, the whole story unfolds. This one is a bit faster than Wicked, God, Wicked Saints. Um, just a little bit faster. Um, but still moves very much like a D&D campaign like Wicked Saints. It's still very heavy in the, the talking, traveling, plotting uh, or planning um, uh, combination. So, but at the same time, they it does have a few more like fight scenes in it. Um, nothing too heavy, um, and there's definitely um, there's definitely times where the the timeline and the story jumps. So you could be you could be reading in one paragraph, and then all of a sudden when you move on to the next paragraph, it's four or five weeks ahead in time so it can be a bit disorienting um it's um i think that's that's kind of really a bad thing uh or one one bad thing is that it, that it just sometimes it doesn't quite um flow a, a bit um and again the one bad mark the reason why i wouldn't give it a five star rating is just like wicked saints the words the pronunciations. I got about halfway through and I felt like I was missing the magic because I was fighting so hard with trying to pronounce these Russian Polish names and places and it's just like I gave up. I was frustrated. 
I put the book down and it's like, I need to get the audio version of this because this is the only way I'm ever going to get through this book. And I really desperately wanted to get through it. And I wanted to feel like I had with Wicked Saints. Um, so I got it. Um, and I loved it. Um, so in this one, some of the characters um have shifted alignments using D&D terms here um some more than others I feel like Nadia went a bit more chaotic instead of being like lawful good um mainly you know she she's she goes through a lot of the book doubting and in, in, in between doubting her gods and then having faith in her gods she's always questioning but she wants to she wants so badly to follow and believe in her gods blindly um and you know she's really not all that good and noble like she was in the first one she's definitely understanding that she needs to kind of get her hands dirty a bit um nadia gets interesting for me at times um but I still found her kind of a bit of annoying, especially with her inner monologue, with her, you know, flopping back and forth where she wants to question her gods on why they've abandoned her, and at the same time, still wanting to have that complete and utter blind faith in them, and it's just like, make your mind. You're going to believe in your gods or you're not. Um, Seraphine... You know, Seraphim was always kind of right there in that middle, neutral, chaotic neutral, I would say. And this one, I think he kind of stays. He might go a bit more to, to the evil side in a way. It's kind of hard to tell with him. Um, but he spends most of the book fighting a dark passenger um, and trying to not let it tear him apart. Malakiage is still 100% the same, <laughs> if not a little worse. He is still scheming. He is still a liar. But you can't help but love him. Oh my gosh, she was amazing. Um, um, oh, and one thing about Seraphim that I totally forgot. Um, he does have a love interest. And I was actually really happy about that. I liked the, the pairing of it felt natural. It didn't feel forced. It felt perfect. Um, which I'm not going to give that away because it was a really nice little surprise when... I got to listen to it or read it. So, yes, but his love interest, I loved it. It was really cool. It was really cute. Um, but anyways, back to Malakiash. I, yeah, you know, I loved him. He's definitely still holding true to who he is. He does not hate himself. He loves what he has become. He's, he is the monster, and who doesn't love a little monster boy? So, anyways, um... But yeah, uh, there's definitely more conflict and tension between the characters. They are, um, throughout the book, again, they get mashed together and are trying to figure out how to survive each other while trying to meet the end goal. And I liked it. There was a lot more Malachi and Nadia scenes, and it was really cool. Now, my only, my only bad thing about them two together is that it does kind of feel forced. For someone who is so blindly believing in in her gods and not wanting to question and feeling um, very defensive for being made to question her gods, she is 100% head over heels for Malachiage, and it doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, and you know, and I can see where Malachiage is, is coming for his light to her uh, because she's a puzzle um, and she's complicated. But I don't see the reverse. For them but you know I really was I mean I just loved every scene that Malachi Elvis was in um, he he brings so much character to these books and again he's the reason why I love these books so much um, and the like Malachi Elvis is going through a lot of like transformations and stuff like that and I feel like Duncan did a really good job describing the horrible mess that he is um and it was kind of funny going through and reading the book or listening to the book i was also trying to pinpoint what particular creature he could be in a D, &D campaign uh, with the shifting of his body that's happening and the the horrors that that is that he's 
enacted upon himself, what type of character would that be? And I still haven't figured it out, but I'm, I'm still fighting to see which one that is. Um, the ending, again, happened really, really fast in this one. This one, you know, in the last hundred pages, man, it really got going. And, but this one, I saw what was going to happen, the way it was going to happen, almost word for word. Um, that I just, I knew it was going to happen this way. Um, I was shocked. I had, I stopped even, I was getting my dog's food ready, and I completely stopped doing that. And I was like, oh my god. Um, <laughs> but I saw it, so I was kind of prepared. I did read comments, everybody said they were crying. I didn't cry. Maybe I just don't have a heart. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and I saw the little twist thing with Seraphim that happened. But overall, the ending, when I got to the last little bit of the audiobook, I loved it. Oh my god. I, like, we were, yeah, I had to, to break away from a group and go and finish the last five five minutes of this book and be like, I ran back in there. It's like, it's okay. It's over. I'm okay. We're good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you because, damn. But anyways. Overall, I really was happy with the ending of the book. It does kind of end on a cliffhanger, so be prepared for that because it makes you it makes you want to just jump into the next book um, even more. Um, but yeah, I I totally enjoyed Ruthless Gods. I think I enjoyed that one more than Wicked Saints, and I think it really all has to do with Malakiash. So I I am totally enthralled by the Vulture Boy. Um, he is super, super cool. I cannot wait to see what is going to happen with um, the whole group um, in the next book. Oh, and that leads me to one thing I did forget to mention. So there are secondary characters in the book. There is Casper and um, Ostia and uh, Prejahan and Rashid. And there's a new girl coming in. Uh, that came into Ruthless Gods, um, that is a Kaliazi that, uh, like a Kaliazi princess. Um, I, I liked them. I'm glad they were there, but they honestly felt like filler. Um, I feel like Duncan kind of forgot about them somewhat. Um, and it does kind of make sense throughout the, towards the end of the book when all of a sudden everybody kind of just disappears and it's only really Seraph and Nadia and Malakiaj that it's kind of going around. Um, and it does feel like they kind of are forgotten. So, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, they're okay, but yeah, they just, it honestly, they honestly felt like fillers to me. But, um... But yeah, I think that is my review, or my discussion, or what do you want to call it, um, about Wicked Saints and Ruthless Gods. Um, I enjoyed them so much, but like I said, Malaka is just the reason why, um, why I love this, these books so much. Um, I feel like the writing could be probably a little bit better, um, a little bit more descriptive. Um, but like I said, I'm used to d and I'm used to things, um, the, the way that they're described is, so feels very much normal for me for certain d and um, campaigns that I have been in, and, um, it flowed very much like, like that, um, so I didn't quite have an issue with it, I'm just used to more books having a bit more of a, of a description or, um, yeah, description, I guess is the right word. But anyways, um, Wicked Saints and Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan. They are flipping amazing. Um, definitely check them out if you like the horror gothic um, feel to it. But yeah, I want to know what y'all think. Have y'all read it? Is this going to interest you on to reading them and checking them out? Um, and I cannot wait till the third book. So hopefully we don't have that long to wait. But uh, anyways, I'll like uh, like the video, subscribe if you have it, um, comment with your thoughts on Wicked Saints and Ruthless Gods. I want to know what y'all thought, who's your favorite character, and who's the one that you really just could not stand. Um, what do you think about them? Uh, I, want, I want to talk to somebody about this, so go ahead and do that. But, um, but yeah, so uh, we will, or I will, catch y'all guys next time. Uh, have a good one. Bye.